K-Man Builds. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be doing a few upgrades on my sawmill that I built a little over a year ago. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things that I probably should have done initially, uh, but was just trying to get it done and some things that I've learned. Uh, the very first thing that we're going to work on is going to be fixing um, the height of my cut. Uh, currently, if the blade guide is all the way out, I've got just under a 40 inch diameter cut on the width from one side to the other. The problem I ran into is that when I go as far up as I can go here, um, the distance from my cut down to where I'm putting the log, it's the max is 36 inches. So I don't quite have the full 40 inch diameter that I want. Uh, I looked at trying to maybe find a way to raise it up there, but the problem being everything that's up there is as short as it can get, and so I can't go up. So that means the only option is to add to the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut off the bottom down here and we're gonna add about 10 inches um, to each leg and that should give me plenty of room. Uh, the problem I ran into is that this tubing is a, a very odd shape, or excuse me, odd size. Uh, it's actually two and a half inch, but it's just under two and a half inch OD, uh, which means to actually have a piece of tubing that slides over it, I would need a piece of tubing that is two and a half inch ID and that's just really I couldn't find any so what's gonna end up happening is I went and bought a two and a half inch flat bar and so once we raise it up uh, I'm gonna go in there and weld on the flat bar on each on all, all four sides and we're gonna create our own tubing um, and that will also give, allow me to put a little more gusseting in, inside it and actually kind of make it a little bit stronger uh, so that should fix it uh, the 10 inches uh, shouldn't affect my sliders any on here on the tubing uh, because I've got from where the slider is here down to the cut is almost 12 inches. So I should be able to go all the way down and actually make contact with the top of my addition and it won't, you know, it won't affect the, the cut at all. So that's good. Uh, the other change that I'm going to have to make, and if you watch the series on making this video, I made a comment about it, um, is the mounting of my pillow blocks on this, uh, this side over here. Um, what happened is I've got the pillow blocks mounted about this far apart, uh, which is not an issue except from the front pillow block to the actual wheel is about eight inches. And that's just not good. It's way too far and uh, it just, I don't have enough um, torque over there to be able to flatten it or to keep the blade from turning a little bit. And so um, my bandsaw blade rides on the front of the wheel. It stays on, but it rides on the front of the wheel because I just can't turn it enough. So we're going to have to add on some tubing, some framework um, to put that pillow block in front of um, the frame here and get it as close to the back of this wheel as I can so that I've got enough strength there to put the torque on it that I need the tension in when I'm tightening this thing up. Uh, other than that, Everything else on here has worked pretty much exactly the way I wanted. I've been extremely happy with my blade guides. Uh, as you can see on the video, this thing's got a little over 70,000 views in a year. Um, this has been a, an exceptional uh, design. Uh, I've not had any issues with it at all. And in fact, I don't have to adjust it pretty much at all. Um, so it's kind of a, it's a real simplistic way of doing it, but that's been really good. Um, the actual uh, Harbor Freight little uh, winch up there for raising lower with the remote worked really really well um, everything I've done is, has been pretty good uh, the one other thing I'm probably going to add I'm probably going to add a few more wheels on the bottom because I only have one on each corner and I think it's a little much too much weight on those wheels so I'm probably going to add another set of four on each corner just to give it some more uh, stability there uh, so that it'll roll a little easier because there's not as much weight on each wheel um, so all right so i just managed to get my forks <laughs> from my tractor just around the motor uh, so I can pick it up. The uh, reason that's important, normally I lower this motor all the way down out of the way and get it as far down as I can, but I can't have any of this in the way down here where I'm working. So I had to just barely lower it down enough to where it'll fit in there. <laughs> 
but it worked. All right, so now we can work on going ahead and um, we're going to take measurements from the hole down. And so that way we have exact measurement from the bottom of the hole down how far we're going to go and then make the cut. Uh, that way the cut is parallel all the way around. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is put a line that makes contact with just the bottom of that hole. All right, so obviously uh, it goes without saying that these, these lines need to be straight all the way across so that you have a nice even cut. Uh, I'm going to have to do these by hand. Uh, I don't, don't want to take the chance of using a portable bandsaw because sometimes they don't cut exactly straight anyway. Well, it's a good thing I did this. Uh, <laughs> I forgot I didn't only tack these things on. I didn't finish weld them on, so they were kind of kind of loose. So luckily, we'll be able to go ahead and finish that out. And like I said, we're probably going to put another uh, wheel on each corner. Uh, halfway or three quarters away boxed in. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to measure off uh, about an inch back on here um, using my square and we're going to go ahead and put a mark on here uh, for where we need to be um, so that we can go ahead and draw a line. Uh, an inch, that's still three quarters of an inch. It's a little too far. Okay, so we're going to mark it at three quarters of an inch. And then we'll go ahead and mark this all the way around. Um, then we'll come in, put these on here, and that was a little tight. Have to hammer that one on. It's looser. Then we'll slide this on, make sure that it's square all the way around, and then we're going to tack it on. Uh, the good thing about having this open like this is the fact that once I tack it on here, I can go on the inside and I can weld up at least three sides of this prior to putting on the cap. Uh, so that should give me a lot a uh, lot more extra strength in here being able to weld on the inside and the outside both on all four of those so I think that's a good plan If I tap one of these on here nice and tight And I square it up with these lines on all three sides It should be square
good? All right, so we're ready to go ahead and start putting these on. And uh, one thing I ran into that uh, I recall from before, uh, once I cut these off, um, they kind of bowed in a little bit. Uh, so I measured from the inside, or the, the uh, outside here to the outside, and it was 28 and three quarter. And so I'm a little off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I, uh, I measured across these two here and subtracted the, from the 28 and 3 quarter and that leaves me exactly two foot should be from the inside to inside so i'm gonna cut a two by four that's two foot put it in there and then i'm gonna hammer it down until it gets level across here and then i know that the outside should fit and then these should slide right on All right, so I had my assistant come out and help me uh, use the clamps to get this on. So basically, I just put the clamp on the outside and then torqued it down until it got where it needs to be. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to tack these on um, and then take it out to the sawmill and put it on the track and make sure that everything sits nice and level. Uh, provided all the wheels touch and everything sits level, then we'll bring it back in and finish welding it out. All right, so we got it back on there and everything's squared up uh, and looks good except for, let's see if I can show you here, that one wheel there is just not quite touching. You can see I can push it down. So what we'll need to do is we'll cut this weld off and then drop it down. You can see where when, I'm, when I welded on there, it got up just a little higher on the line. So we need to cut these off, drop it just a 16th of an inch maybe and then uh, we should be good. All right, so now we got, uh, we got everything leveled up. And so now we're gonna go in and we're gonna start welding on the inside, get all the insides welded up, um, determine if I'm gonna put any kind of, any more um, gusseting inside or not. I may come in and put something in here uh, just to give it a little more strength right here, but I don't know if it's actually necessary um, because this, uh, this eighth inch wall is the same thickness or a little bit thicker than this section here. So, uh, I think it's probably going to be strong enough, but uh, we're going to get that welded. Okay, so we've got the uh, insides all welded up. Um, <laughs> not perfect, but it'll work. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on getting the uh, caps on the outside welded on and finish up the welding and then clean it up.
All right, I've got everything painted and got it back on the track. Uh, everything sits nice and level and it's squared up with the track. It rolls very well uh, and this gained, gained the inches that I needed so that I can do a full 40 inch diameter um, log. So this will help out, especially since I got a customer bringing in a couple of them, uh, 40 by 10 foot coming in probably in, in this next week. So uh, look forward for a video of that as well because that will be the biggest log that we've ever milled. So uh, this was definitely what's one thing I probably should have done at the very beginning uh, was measure that out. But uh, you know, to this point, it's not really had a, been a problem. So uh, no fault, no foul.